Hello everybody. Today we're going to do part two of analyzing rational functions. Let's get to it. Here we go. All right. The domain. Let's let's number these. One, two, three, four, five. So one, we're going to talk about the domain. How do you find the domain? And how do you find the vertical asymptotes because they go together when there are no points of discontinuity? That's the big deal here. This is an introduction, so we are not dealing with holes in the graph. So under those circumstances, one and two are basically the same question. Let's see how. To find the domain, I take the denominator. And I set it equal to zero. And most, if not all, of these denominators are factorable. So let's factor. Now I factor negative 12. And what will that be? Well, first, as you know, I cheat a little bit. And I just look at positive 12. So that would give me 1 times 12, and 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. However, we're really dealing with negative 12, so I put my negative sign back, and then I make one of the factors negative, because how do you get a negative number? You multiply a negative number times a positive number, or the other way around. Positive 1 times negative 12, positive 2 times negative 6, and positive 3 times negative 4. Now, I need to find one of these factor pairs that has two numbers in it that add up to the middle number, negative 4, right here. And here it is, positive two plus negative six equals negative four. So I will use a plus two and a minus six. And then I will set each factor equal to zero. X plus two equals zero and x minus 6 equals 0. Subtract 2, subtract 2 on the left. Add 6, add 6 on the right. And since 2 minus 2 is 0 over here on the left, that will leave me x equals 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And over here, same thing, negative 6 plus 6 is 0, leaving me x equals 0 plus 6, which is 6. Now two things are going on here. So I'm going to write down number 2, equations of the vertical asymptotes. because I now have the equations of the two vertical asymptotes, x equals negative two and x equals positive six. Remember, there are no holes in the graph. There are no points of discontinuity. Or the story might be a little different. It would be a little different. 
OK, now. For for the domain. These are the numbers that X cannot be allowed to equal. So I'm going to erase. Well, I was going to erase this to give me more room. And then I'm going to write the domain in using two different methods. Set builder notation. All the all the real numbers such that they obey the rule that X cannot equal negative two and positive six. This is set builder notation. You need to become familiar with both. However, what you'll use most often is my favorite interval notation. And the easiest way to do this is to make yourself a little x-axis. And remember, positive infinity is out here. Negative infinity is out here. And I'm going to graph, plot these two points right here. Negative 2 on the x-axis and positive 6 on the x-axis. Those are the numbers that have to be removed from the x-axis for this problem. So I'm going to make holes at 6 and at negative 2. That way, I now know which intervals of numbers are OK. From negative infinity to the left side of negative 2, and from the right side of negative 2 to the left side of positive 6, and from the right side of positive 6 to the left side of positive infinity. Wherever there's a gap, I'll, I will write a U. So in interval notation, here is the domain. Negative infinity, comma negative 2, union, negative 2, comma 6, paren, union, paren, 6, comma, infinity, paren. So let's read that again. Paren, negative infinity, comma, negative 2, paren. Union, paren, negative 2, paren, uh, uh, comma, 6, paren. Union, and paren, 6, comma, in positive infinity, paren. So we have answered questions one and two. We've written in set builder notation and in interval notation what the domain of this function is, and we've written the equations of the vertical asymptotes. So here we are, negative two, And positive six. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. 
Now we're going to find the horizontal asymptote. For that, I need the entire problem. So let me do this. It's what us lazy people do. It's good. Okay. Make it even bigger. Now I'm trying to scroll. But that's always hard to do after I cut and paste. Um, what we do to find the horizontal asymptote, the ha, so that we can have a laugh, perhaps, is we look at the highest degree term, the highest power term on the top, and the highest power term on the bottom. Notice that the top the numerator has a polynomial in it, a binomial x minus two, that has degree one. The denominator, the bottom, has a quadratic trinomial in it, which is a polynomial, and it has degree two. Oops, there, and degree two. Notice that the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator. We don't have to calculate anything. We know automatically that the x-axis is our horizontal asymptote. The, the name of the x-axis the equation of the x-axis is y equals zero. So that was easy. All you have to do is notice a one here, an invisible one, and a two here. And that's all it takes. I wish everything in life were that easy. Now, what does that mean for us? It means the x-axis is our horizontal asymptote. Right there. Y equals zero. Meanwhile, I did not write the equations of the vertical asympt asymptotes and I should have. X equals negative two, X equals positive six. Vertical numbers always have X equals, I mean vertical numbers, vertical asymptotes, vertical lines always have X equals a number as their equation. And horizontal lines always have Y equals a number as their equation. Now this provides a shell for us to graph in. <coughs> While the graph is never, ever, ever going to cross a vertical asymptote, sometimes graphs will cross the horizontal asymptote. When it's in close, to the center of the graph. Now, now that is to the center of the two axes, the origin. Now, I wanna make sure I said that correctly. I'm gonna say it again. Graphs are never allowed. They can never, ever cross vertical asymptotes, period. Vertical asymptotes are like walls. However, horizontal asymptotes can be crossed as long as they're crossed relatively close to the center of the graph. 
to the origin, I should say. Because what the horizontal line does is it tells you the tendency of the graph as X gets close to positive infinity and as X gets close to negative infinity. Really, I should draw it the other way. But you don't see it that way. OK, so now we're being asked, well, OK, this graph, this this graph in here crosses the X axis. Where? What's the X intercept? Number four. What you do is you take the numerator X minus two, set it equal to zero and solve for X plus two plus two. X equals two. Now we're not talking about a vertical line. We're talking about the X intercept. And that is X equals two right here. And as you know, that's a point. We write it like a point. Two comma zero, because Y is always zero, hence the name. Y is always zero on the X axis. And while we're at it, X is always zero on the Y axis. So the name of the Y axis is X equals zero. That's just a separate little fact there. Now, how about the Y intercept? Here I go, forgetting to change my colors. Oh, well, what we're going to do here is this is the code to say, let every X equal zero. So zero minus two over zero minus zero minus 12 is going to be negative two over negative 12, which is positive one sixth. right here. See, this is y equals zero. This is y equals one. This is one sixth right here. And it's the point zero, one sixth. And I should have written this here two comma zero and we're done we have found the domain the vertical asymptotes the horizontal asymptote the x-intercept and the y-intercept we have analyzed this rational function Now, here we go again. No, I'll save it. I was going to tell you something, but I'll save it. All right, the domain one, two, three, four, five. And again, on the problems I've chosen, um, one and two are going to work very closely together. So for the domain and for question two, we take the denominator, the 
set it equal to zero, and solve for x. Now this is kind of a scary looking quadratic trinomial, but notice that 49 is seven squared and one is one squared. So we have actually have here um, um, a perfect square trinomial. You don't really have to know that. We're gonna factor it like we would normally factor it. Well, we would have to use the AC method. So, let's, let's factor it because it might be, you can never be sure, there's a test. Since this is, I'm almost positive, um, a quadratic, well, it's a, a perfect square trinomial. This is what will be true if we have a perfect square trinomial. We know that 49 is a perfect square, so seven squared times x squared is seven x squared, and one squared is a uh, one squared. Now, if, and this is an if. It's an if and only if, in fact. Here's the test. If this term equals two times what's in this parenthesis. All right, let me put this in parenthesis so I can say times what's in that parenthesis then this is a perfect square trinomial, which is gonna save us a lot of work because you know how much work the AC method is. So let's see, two times seven times X is 14 X times one is 14 X. So yes, the 14 X is 14 X. So here's how we write this. I take the 7x and I put it here. I take the 1 and I put it here. And I take this sign and I put it here. So we now have 7x minus 1 quantity squared equals 0. So how do we solve for x? very easily. Just watch. What is 7x minus 1 squared? Well, it's 7x minus 1 times 7x minus 1. So all we have to do really, ugh, because these are identical, is solve it once. 7x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That'll leave me 7x equals positive 1. Then I'm going to, let's bring it down a little more, 7, uh, I'm going to, yes, divide by seven and divide by seven. So X equals one seventh. Now this is going to happen again when I do this, so I'm not gonna to bother to go all the way. I'll just bring it down here. X equals one seventh. Now here's an important fact. This is one solution, one solution, because one seventh is one seventh, one solution that occurs twice.
That means one seventh has multiplicity two. because it occurs twice, two times, here and here. But gosh, that would mean that we only have one vertical asymptote? Exactly. The equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals one seventh, which is this is zero x equals zero, this is x equals one. X equals one seventh would like you can only estimate it right there. X equals one seventh. And as you know, for the domain, if I draw a little x axis, let's make it a slightly bigger x axis. for no reason other than I wanted to draw a straight line, so I cheated. I'm going to tell you that one seventh is wherever I want to put it. How about there? It's the X axis. So my little hole's gonna go here. And in interval notation, well, yeah. Wow, in interval notation, I'm going to have two intervals that provide me with all the numbers I'm allowed to use. And only one number I'm not allowed to use. Okay, all the numbers in here are okay, and all the numbers in here are okay. In set builder notation, all the real numbers such that this rule has to be obeyed. Any number, that's what this says, any real number, any number in our number system, any number on the x-axis, except x equals one-seventh. So there. Now three. The horizontal asymptote. No. V. We're going to run out of room, aren't we? I'll have to write really small. Uh, the power here, the highest power in the numerator is one, 
the low the the highest power in the denominator is two so the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator so your ha is the line y equals zero which is hmm, which is the x-axis i'm thinking of changing the color to neon pink so you can actually see it there. But no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, here's y equals zero. Okay, now it looks like we're not going to have an x-intercept. But don't, don't trust the graph. We are going to have an x-intercept. Four. The x-intercept. I take the numerator x minus 8 and set it equal to 0 and solve for x, which means I'm going to add 8 to both sides of the equation. That's 0. So x plus 0 is x. 0 plus 8 is 8. So we are going to have x equals 8. Now, what does that say? Well, that says way out here. So let me extend this x-axis. Way out here. The graph The graph way, oh, one more time. I'm going to try one more time. Not perfect, but as perfect as I'm going to get it. Ah. Oh. There now. Our graph, let's try to make it blue over here. It's going to be rising very slowly, and then when it, get, it gets to 8, it crosses. It goes up a little bit, and then it comes down. And forever and ever and ever, it'll be getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, even though I'm drawing it not well at all. That's what you'll have. It's not unusual to have a little hump. See if I could draw it decently, it would be better. But their, their drawing is not very good either. This is from my calculator. You cannot trust your graphing calculator completely, so don't depend on it. Five we're going to find the y-intercept. f of 0 equals 0 minus 8 over 0 minus 0 plus 1. So that'll be negative 8. What does that say? That means this guy right here, which is, uh, and, and this one is going to stay underneath, or we would have been able to find another x-intercept. That means this guy is going to go down, 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 but it's going to be getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. 
to one seventh, to X equals one seventh. So somewhere it's got to cross the Y axis and where it crosses is at negative eight. So let's extend this one. It's the way you save your marks when you're on a PDF editor. Um, OK, so. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's pretend that's negative eight. So this is going to continue on down. What I wouldn't give for a nice trick to. All right, now this is getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And look, See, this is hopeless and hopeless and hopeless and hopeless. Closer and closer, it crosses at negative eight and it keeps slowly, slowly, slowly getting closer and closer and closer to that line right there. So it's not going to make a big jump. It's just going to stay really close, really close, really close, slowly getting closer to this line right there. Trust the math, not your graph. That's about the best I can do. So you what have you met here? What what have we talked about that's relatively new? Um, factoring a perfect square trinomial when the first term and the last term are perfect squares. Take a chance. See if this middle term is two times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term. Just check it out. It'll save you a whole lot of steps. And here we have one more, one more. We're tough enough to do this. One, two, three, four, five. OK, what's the domain? The domain, we're going to take this and set it equal to zero and solve for X. So. For number one, we've got X squared minus 2X minus 35 equals zero. Boom, 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 boom equals zero, x, x. Now I know that 35 equals five times seven. And so negative 35 is going to equal either negative five times positive seven or positive five times negative seven. And positive five plus negative seven equals negative two. So these are our numbers that we want, plus five and minus seven. Then we set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. x plus five equals zero. Now I don't want to do it that way. I want to try to save a line. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to do that, but let's try. Minus 
five minus five, yes. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Um, X minus seven equals zero. So I'm gonna hit it with a plus seven and plus seven. So that X equals negative five and X equals positive seven. Notice the signs are different from the signs here. It's not enough to stop there. All right, and since there are no points of discontinuity, there are no holes in the graph, no holes in the graph. Then number two is gonna get its answer from number one, the equation of the vase. X equals negative five and X equals positive seven. Those are the equations. Now the, the um, a domain, of course, is going to be all the real numbers such that X does not equal negative five or positive seven. So we get, we get, we get two answers from finding the domain. Not a bad deal. I'm going to make myself an X axis. Right there. And put my positive infinity here, my negative infinity here, put my negative five here and my positive seven here. And then there and there. And then it's oh so easy to do this and this and this, and that gives you your intervals. The domain written in interval notation is negative infinity, comma negative five, parenthesis, union, paren, negative five, comma seven, paren, union, paren, seven to positive infinity. So right there. Now three, the horizontal asymptote, right? Go away. Oh, now here I am rushing through. I don't want to do that. There. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Okay. Oops, see what happens when I start at the top. But I, I'd rather start at the top because it's easier to draw when you start at the top, but no such luck, okay. Okay, that's X equals negative five. And X equals positive seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Now we're going to find the horizontal asymptote. So I have to I have to copy this and bring it down just so we can see it. Looks like f of x has a hangover here. Here. <laughs> okay. I see that the highest power on top is two. The highest power on bottom is two. So, degree two, The numerator has degree two, the denominator has degree two. Oh no, the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. That means we have to do a little bit of work. Take the leading term from the top. Put it over the leading term from the bottom. And be sure to write their coefficients. Well, you see, I have to say that here. If this were two and this were three, of course you would have written them. But it looks like there's nothing there, so that means there's a one there and a one there. Now, cancel out the x squares. We're left with one over one. So the ha the ha is not just one, but y equals one. It's a horizontal line. Let's go find y equals one. It's not the x-axis this time. There it is. Cool. Now, what was that? That was four. And five. Ah. Oh. No, this was three. Eraser. There we go. Now we're going to do four. That was the horizontal asymptote, which is three, four, x-intercept. I take the numerator, the top of the fraction. This time I have a quadratic trinomial. I'm going to set it equal to zero and solve for x. Look here, you have two x-intercepts. x squared plus x minus six equals zero. Let's factor. 6 equals 
1 times 6, and 3 times 2. So negative 6 equals negative 1 times positive 6, negative 3 times positive 2, positive 1 times negative 6, positive 3 times negative 2, and look. 3 plus negative 2 is positive 1. So we're going to have x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. And then I set x plus 3 equal to 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0. So we subtract 3 from both sides. We add 2 to both sides. x equals negative 3. x equals positive 2. I have two x-intercepts. Negative 3 comma 0. And positive 2 comma 0. Let's go find them and mark them. Negative 3. And positive 2. Well, that really didn't work all that well. I thought it would. OK, I give up. We'll just go back to pink. Actually, magenta, not pink. Negative 3, positive 2. And 5. What do we want? We want the y-intercept. Okay, f of zero equals, this is a zero, this will be a zero, this is a zero, we'll have zero plus zero minus six over 0, minus 0, minus 35. So negative 6 over negative 35. I'm going to make absolutely certain that this cannot be reduced. 6 is 2 times 3. 35 is 5 times 7. Um, the only other thing that 35 equals is 1 times 35. And for 6, it's only 1 times 6. There is no cancellation. Therefore, 6 over 35 is our answer for the y-intercept. 6 35ths. Let's go find it. Right here. This is y equals 6 35ths. So our y-intercept will be written the 6 35ths goes here, but x equals 0 goes here. There you go. Now remember, you can always backtrack this video. And there's a part one that goes more into the details 
of how you find the domain, how you find vertical asymptotes, how you find uh, the horizontal asymptote, how you find x-intercepts, how you find the y-intercept of a rational function with um, notes actually written down on the first page there with the first part of this um, video. Not this video, solving up uh, analyzing rational functions part one. This is going to be analyzing rational functions part two. I hope this has helped. See you later. Bye bye.